Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tracy, and if you don't know me, I have a passion for upcycling clothing, and I teach sewing on here. You guys follow me on social media. You know I've been doing this Thrift Foot Thursday series, and you guys requested a tutorial on this sheer lace cami. I hacked my old sewing pattern, the fitted mini dress, but I created a new one for this top specifically, and it's available on my Etsy shop. The required materials for this project are any four-way stretch fabric. I upcycled a maxi skirt I thrifted. It was made up of a stretch mesh and a stretch poly lining. I decided to just line the top portion of this top, but you're welcome to line the entire thing if you want more coverage. Um, but also if you make it sheer, this would be stunning in like a stretch lace. I used a lace trim to finish my neckline and I added some at the under bust. So you're welcome to do that technique also. Also gonna need a Pico elastic. That's what I use for the back neckline. You'll need some elastic for your straps and rings and slides to create adjustable straps. I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial, so let's get into it. This was the maxi skirt I thrifted, so you can see that it's made up of a mesh and a stretch poly lining. So I just took it apart and saved some fabric to make a matching skirt later. Take your fabric and fold it. A lot of these pattern pieces are cut on the fold. With stretch fabric, it's really easy to just cut on the fold. It's very forgiving. Just make sure the greatest stretch is going across the body. Take your pattern piece and a rotary cutter. It makes it so much easier. I'm cutting out the lining for pattern piece one. And then I take pattern piece one again and just cut out the main fabric, which is the stretch mesh. Repeat this to pattern piece number two because I also wanted that piece lined. And I definitely recommend getting some pattern weights. It makes the process of cutting fabric go by so much faster because then you don't have to like struggle with pinning your fabric and it taking forever. And you're just gonna cut out pattern piece three and four out of your mesh if you want the bottom portion of your top to be sheer, but you can also line that part if you desire. And now I'm just placing the mesh fabric on top of the lining. And you don't need that many pins, just pin the corners down and then just take it to the sewing machine and with a stitch size five, just stitch all the way around the pieces. For pieces three and four, I used the existing hem that was on this skirt. So I just place right sides together and just pin it in place. I take it to the sewing machine and just overlock a quarter inch seam allowance. Now that the bottom portion of the bodice is sewn, we can sew the top. So place right sides together of pattern piece one and two, pin at the side seams, take it to the sewing machine and just overlock with a quarter inch seam allowance. After sewing the side seams, just mark your center front and center back on your bodice and do the same to the bottom of the bodice and now you can place right sides together and just matching up the center front center back and side seams so now you can just pin that circle which is the under bust seam and after you pin that you can just take it to the sewing machine and overlock a quarter inch And you can see that you have a beautifully sewn bodice and it looks so nice with the bottom portion being sheer but you can make the entire top sheer and you can also add some lace so that's what I did I went ahead and just cut out some lace and this was non-stretch lace and I split it right down the middle I'm going in with my little snips and just making it look a little bit more expensive by cutting around the floral motifs I was like so in the zone of like sewing this top together that I forgot I was going to add lace trim so I ended up sewing the entire top before um, actually attaching the lace beforehand which is what you should do so I just went ahead and put it on my form and then placed the lace where I needed it to sit and pinned it down and because I already sewed it together I had to go in by hand and like hand stitch this lace in place and then take it to my sewing machine and just applique it on top but it did look beautiful at the end and I also placed some lace at the underbust seam but you could also just leave some lace at the neckline and that's it, it's your choice really 
but I do recommend just doing this at the front of the top only, just so the back of the top will stretch and you can easily slip it on. If you want to add lace from the beginning, this is how you should do it. Um, you want to take your lace and just kind of fold it in half and find where the scallop matches up. And you want to just like place it against your pattern and then just cut out that shape. So if you want lace at the end of the seam, you can see I'm slightly like just placing it at the center front fold. And then that's where you would cut is like where the pattern ends. So um, you're gonna do the same thing to the top. So on the pattern piece, I actually mark where you wanna place the low point of the scallop of your lace, and then just take your scissors or your rotary cutter and then just trim it to the exact end point of that pattern piece. You wanna trim against the armhole to follow the exact shape, and that is how you're going to pin the lace on your front bodice. So if you're going to add lace, the sewing slightly different, you wanna just sew pattern piece one to pattern piece three first, and sew that under bust seam. Now you can just take your lace trim and just place it on your bodice at the neckline and the under bust seam if you desire to have some lace there as well. You just wanna pin along that. I recommend hand basting that lace into place so it doesn't move because it gets kind of annoying if you have pins in the way when you're actually appliquing the lace. After you stitch that lace in place, you're going to take pattern piece two and sew it to pattern piece four and then place the front and back together and just sew the side seams. After you hand baste your lace into place, you want to take it to the sewing machine. Make sure you're using the clear applique foot, it's going to make this process so much easier. So I'm just using a zigzag stitch when I'm stitching this lace in place and you're just doing a pivoting motion when going around the floral motifs. So just sew as far as you can, pivot, and just keep sewing around that lace. And just go ahead and remove all of those basting stitches since everything is sewn. And before I cut away the excess fabric at the top neckline, just take some chalk and mark where you need to place your straps, just so you don't lose where they're gonna go. I finished my back neckline with a Pico elastic, and if you need an in-depth tutorial on how to do this, I have a linked one down in the description below. So in my tutorial for my fitted mini dress, I go over how to install Pico elastic, and you can also use the Pico elastic to finish the front and the armholes as well. So that's how I did it there. If you don't want to use the lace, you can just follow that tutorial. And then I'm just zigzagging it in place. Since the lining fabric is peeking through at the top of the neckline, from the zigzag stitch, I'm just trimming a half inch away from it and just pinking it. So with the pinking shears, it cuts your fabric on the bias so it doesn't fray. But since it's stretch fabric, you don't really need to use these. You can just trim with regular scissors. With the lace at the top of the neckline, you end up with a straight neckline versus a scooped one. I was at my local Notion store and they had pre-made elastic adjustable straps so I just went ahead and bought those but if you watch my fitted mini dress tutorial I do go over how to make adjustable straps on that dress so you can just follow that tutorial. And even though I use the existing hem on the skirt I wanted to show you guys how to do a lettuce hem yourself. So you want to start going to your overlock machine and removing the left needle. and remove the thread for the left needle as well. Set the right needle tension to four. Set your upper looper tension to an eight and a half and then set your lower looper tension to a nine. And set your stitch width to the lowest setting, so mine's 0.6. I make sure my blade is a little bit farther away from the presser foot. Then I change my knob from a standard overlock to a rolled hem and set it to a one. You can place your fabric against the presser foot and just start stitching. So if you don't stretch your fabric, your rolled hem will just be laying flat. But if you stretch your fabric, you're going to create a lettuce edge so it'll be curly. 
And I know not everyone has an overlock machine, so you can also do this on your regular sewing machine and just use a zigzag stitch and stretch while you sew a really small zigzag and it'll still give you the same effect. This finish is so stunning on the mesh and you can see what it looks like without stretching the fabric. It lays flat and when you stretch it, you get this really pretty like curly lettuce edge. And this is how I love to finish stretch tops. I hope this sheer lace cami tutorial was so easy to follow. If you do recreate it, please don't forget to tag me on Instagram. My handle is at Transformations by Tracy. I would absolutely love to see and share your tops. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. It really is the best way to support your favorite creators for free. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.